r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. Shy introverted people of reddit. What is the furthest you've ever gone to avoid human interaction? I went on a three week camping trip to avoid two family reunions. I fully support your methods and reasoning. Camping for three weeks without high standards of living. Probably zero electronic devices. No comfort etc. Is probably worse than sacrificing a couple of minutes within a span of three weeks to then still maintain the top tier lifestyle. I love that lifestyle. I'm one with nature. Getting off the bus at the wrong stop and walking because I pressed the stop button too soon and didn't want to tell the driver. First year of college. Did it multiple times. People seem to commonly do this in a deliberate way. The bus drivers are used to it and probably for the most part just ignores such foolery. Or what happened with me and the bus driver eventually just knows to stop at your stop. I was working a lot of evening shifts and getting on the bus at 9.30-10pm and was usually one of the last people on the bus when my stop, S, came up. The first few months I had a hard time telling where my stop was, exactly, so I kept getting off at the wrong stop. I guess the driver must have started noticing where I was getting off and then suddenly he's pulling in and wishing me a good night or reminding me that this was my stop. I just rolled with it. In 7th grade I would hide in the science lab during lunch and recess time and feed and play with the school pets. I would ask to use a bathroom around 10 minutes into lunch and then come back in the last 2 minutes. They probably thought I had some real bad bowel issues. They were 2 birds, a bunny, and 2 guinea pigs. I would feed them carrots and talk to them. Nobody knew that I was there for half of the year. When one of my teachers finally walked in on me I thought I was busted. Luckily she was one of the nicer ones and made it my official job to play with and feed the animals. The hero we deserve. We need more teachers like the one who discovered you. She was one of the best teachers I've ever had. She once bought me a new book because the girl who I had lent mine to had dropped it in the mud. I was upset so she took me to the computer lab and right then and there ordered me a brand new hardcover version of the paperback that had been dropped in the mud. The postman was knocking on my door. So rather than answer it, I decided to army crawl past the door, so he wouldn't see me through the frosted glass. Then he pushed open the letterbox, and saw me splayed across the floor. Ugh. This reminds me of something I did as a kid. In my childhood home there were two large windows on either side of the front door so any visitor could see you and you could see them. After the initial entry there was a long hallway with the kitchen at the end. One day someone rang the doorbell when I was home alone. My parents told me not to answer the door when I was home alone but I wanted to see who it was. So I stood in the kitchen and peered around the kitchen corner to look out the front door. I locked eyes with two Jehovah's Witnesses and then I just slowly pulled my head back around the kitchen corner like nothing even happened. I played way too many James Bond video games as a kid and this corner peering method worked 0 stroke 10 times. When I was a kid whenever Jehovah's Witnesses would pull into our driveway, my mother would turn off the TV and all the lights and tell me we needed to hide. We'd run back to the largest closet in the house, close the door and sit on the floor in complete silence until they stopped knocking and we heard the engine of their car start and leave. Only after we were sure they were gone would we leave our hiding space and life would return to normal. I was always vigilant and prepared for their future return however. It wasn't until I was in school that I suddenly found out that was unusual and not everyone grew up hiding from the Jehovah's Witnesses. In the second or third grade our teacher was telling us about Anne Frank and how they hid from the Nazis. I blurted out something along the lines of, were the SS Jehovah's Witnesses? The teacher was confused at first and then I shared my story. I still remember her red face as she tried not to laugh. Edit. Thank you for the gold and silver. My family also did this. LOL. I have a memory of my mother leaving for work while I was sitting on the porch one summer. Suddenly she was back in the driveway shouting lock the door the Jehovah's Witnesses are coming. And I ran back inside to hide. Hid under a bed while a real estate agent showed a couple around my flat. Couldn't be bothered to go out but can't stand small talk. So decided to lay low. I had a cup of tea. Cushions. A Nokia with snake on it. I was quite happy under there. They were 25 minutes late. I guess I was under the bed for just over an hour. I feared a sneeze. I was in my early 20s. Edit. Ro. This went big. Thanks for the gold. Kind anonymous benefactor. Enjoy your weekends. 
folks, and be sure to keep your breathing, sneezing and flatulence under control if you try this at home. Not that it has any bearing on this. I had a realtor show me a house once and while I was looking around I opened the attic access and bam. There was a whole family quietly sitting in the attic. I assume the owners. I looked at them. They looked at me. Not a word was said. I closed up the attic and then decided it was time to GTFO. Were you? By chance. Looking for houses in Amsterdam. Circa 1944. Accidentally got a family murdered while showing houses. Emma. I once spent a weekend in a hotel because I just wanted to be alone and chill. Reading books and watching TV. The people I lived with at the time couldn't spend more than an hour on their own with some sort of social interaction. The roomie I have now is like minded and we can go days without talking seeing each other and it's great. Best friend I ever had. We still never talk sometimes. You know you have a great friend when the silence is not uncomfortable. Edit. My most upvoted comment is really meaningful to me. Cool. 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 Every time I feel awkward about not speaking with a person I remember that it's only awkward if you decide it's awkward. Works like a charm. Not sure about other side. But well. It's not me who feel awkward. I went to an empty room and stood in the dark for 45 minutes to avoid a team bonding event. I am 95% sure I've done that at least 5 times this year. Team bonding is the absolute worst for an introvert. And icebreakers. Lived in a loft downtown on the third floor. The amount of times I used the stairs in effort to not being trapped on an elevator with a stranger is too many to count. One time there was a family moving in. I walked all the way around the building to the opposite side's entrance to get into the building. Then they were using the elevators. So I took the stairs. Then they were on my floor moving shit in. I didn't want it to look like I was trying this hard to avoid them. So I said, whoops, wrong floor and walked up two extra floors and waited 10 minutes before going back down to see if they were gone. What should have taken me 5 minutes took me close to 30 to get in my apartment. That's when I realized I might have a problem. Okay folks that's a wrap. This clearly won. I didn't order a wrap. Please leave. Wait. But if the family is moving in, won't then eventually see you again on the same floor? My roommate threw a party at my house and I hid from everyone. There's only one front door and everyone would see me if I left and would want to talk to me. I avoided eating that whole night because I didn't want to walk by the party to get food. My car was trapped between other cars. I ended up jumping out of a second story window and walking 3 miles to a 7-Eleven. I ended up jumping out of a second story window and walking 3 miles to a 7-Eleven. LOL. But when you got back the party was over. Since I told my roommate to tell everyone at the party I was out with other friends. When I walked back from 7-Eleven I came through the front door so it really looked like I was never home. Actually got away with it. Then I hit the yawn it's been a long night. Bye and went straight to my room. There was only a front door in the place I was living and there was a very large crowd of neighbors outside having some sort of social gathering BBQ or something. I really needed to pick up some food for dinner. But really, really didn't want to interact with them. So I jumped out the living room window. Walked the long way around the neighborhood to get to the store. Thankfully they kept the party out front so that when I came back I could sneak back in through the window. I failed an important test once because I was too scared to ask the teacher for a pencil. I peed on myself in 4th grade because I was too scared to ask. Only cool kids pee themselves you know. Okay Miles Davis. Going through the drive through just to park and eat alone in my car. Ugh yes. I do this a lot. Or even if I have to pick the food up. I will take it to my car and find a spot away from everyone where I can eat in peace. LOL yup. I just can't handle the noise and humans. I just want to sit in my car in peace and watch YouTube. Rather than associate with my nosy aunt when I lived with her, I told her I was going out for a while, moved my car up the street, and sat in it watching Netflix on my phone for a couple hours. Edit. Spelling. I do this now because my parents are on the verge of divorce and I'm the only child in the house. I ducking hate it. Edit. Thank you much to those that are sending their condolences. I commented this in light-hearted fun of my situation. Now, at the moment of this edit, I sit in a dark room. Terry-eyed because I didn't and never really expect support for this. Edit 2. 
Thank you for your support. I have never received a gold dinghy nor a message from another user until today. This is a bit of an emotional overhaul for me RN. The plot twist is that this is a post to discuss distancing and isolation. Edit 3. OMG. Silver. Gold. And Platinum. Pulls out scroll. Taps mic. I'd like to thank the u slash of reddit. My parent for providing Emmy this experience and reddit itself for giving us the platform. When I was 12, a man in a suit I didn't know knocked on the door. I could see him through the front room window so I hid behind the chair. Looked up to see if he had gone. Made eye contact. Stayed where I was. Wasn't the last time it happened. That was yourself from the future. I'm 29. Guy knocked on my door and I looked out the peephole and he was looking directly gazing into it back at me so I ducked and crouched at the base of the door and then he opened the mail slot to look and which was right above me and I just laid on the ground until he went away. Opening the letterbox to see in? That's so creepy WTF. I never answer the door unless I'm expecting someone. Just today actually. My neighbor was knocking on my door this morning and I didn't answer. When it was time to head to work I realized I didn't have my keys. I think my neighbor found them and was trying to return them. Edit. Added a little more to the above and included an update below. Update. Sure enough. I left my keys in the door last night and my neighbor was nice enough to try to return them. But since I never answer my door, he took them to the front office. Let this be a lesson to my fellow introverts. Don't leave your keys in your door. Also, thank you for the PMs. I ignore knocks on my door too for the most part, but that's because my upstairs neighbor will walk in when I open the door, then proceed to ducking stay and talk for a ducking hour even if I'm in the middle of dinner. I think they recently legalized murder in this situation. I read this elsewhere on reddit, when you answer the door, have a jacket in your hand, then, if you don't want to talk to whomever it was, just throw on your jacket and act like you're leaving so they'll go away, if you do want to talk to the person like that happens. You can just hang the coat up and act like you just got home. I'm not as shy and introverted as I used to be, but now I have moods where I do not even want to see a single person until the mood has passed. When I was living in dorms in college, I would stand in my closet or bathroom for hours just so I wouldn't have to see the people talking in my room. I ended up hearing a lot of conversations I shouldn't have heard because nobody ever knew I was there lol. You can always tell a Milford man edit. Ro, my first gold. Thanks. Save it for the talk room. Son. What kind of conversations? Edit. How the duck is this my most upvoted comment? I wear headphones all the time. Even if they're off not plugged in. I'm so much more productive at work. People at the gym let me be. And people on the street leave me alone on my walk home. I do that and people still bug me. Esp on the train. People will wave in front of my face to get my attention to usually ask for directions. I was standing in between train carriages a few weeks back. There were no seats left and the area I was standing in was really busy. Full of people. So started reading a book to avoid conversation and eye contact. Minding my own business you know. Random guy gets on after about 10 minutes and starts talking to me. He picks me out of the whole damn carriage. I was the only one reading. He wants to know what the book is about initially and then wants a conversation about films, music and more. Ducking nightmare journey. If I'm with headphones and someone bothers me for social interaction I always just act really confused and out of it. As if they woke me up from profound concentration. It sends the message. Don't smile or be courteous. Just be curt and make it clear that all you want is to get back to the thing you were doing. I was getting a taxi back home and must have mumbled or grabbled my destination because it was quite clear he was going to a completely different place. But like, literally as soon as he turned right out of the parking lot instead of left, I literally let the guy drive for 15 minutes in the wrong direction. Eventually just blurting out anywhere here will do and giving him a tenner. And then just walking aimlessly until I found a public transport I recognized and jumped on that. A 10 min cab drive turned into a nearly 2 hour journey home. For those curious and who live in Manchester, UK, I wanted to get a cab from Ashton to Openshaw. And ended up going to Waltham, getting a tram to the city centre, and getting a train from there back home. I know Manchester, you poor thing. That's almost a whole day trip. 
I stopped talking for an entire year of school. 5th grade, to be precise. 6th grade, you slash fatter fox. Hey what's up guys, friends, dude what the duck, you can talk? I actually had this happen to me a few times. I wasn't the most talkative in some classes, so when I spoke it sometimes caused the entire class to turn towards me in shock. The best compliment I've ever received was when I was in a seminar type thing and I don't talk in those much. I raised my hand even though I wasn't really supposed to and started saying something and somebody interrupted me so I stopped talking. A guy I didn't really know at the time tells the interrupter to lem speak. Because you slash Buaman doesn't talk much but when he does it's the best point we've heard all day. Uh, shut up and then the teacher agreed. Literally I draw 20% of my now probably 80% self confidence from this source alone. In order to avoid a mandatory Christmas social for work. I legitimately took myself to the adjust to get the registration wristband. For proof that I actually went to the hospital. And then left. Wasn't sick or anything. And I didn't even see a doctor. I just needed a hospital wristband to prove that I had a reason not to go to the work mixer, so I wouldn't get fired. I hated my co-workers. Edit. The Christmas party was mandatory because I was working at a preschool, and the company wanted to up their reputation as a family-oriented organization to the rich ass parents who were throwing insane amounts of money at the company to babysit their kids. So they had a preschool Christmas concert, followed by an after party for the parents to get to know the faculty, as if we didn't see them every ducking day at drop off pickup. The party was also meant to be a way for us co-workers to get to know each other better, as if we hadn't worked together mf. 7am to 6pm every ducking week. Duck that. Edit 2. Holy shit. This blew up. Thank you. Kind strangers. For the silver. I'm going to do my best to answer your comments. I promise I'm reading every single one of them. What did you say to just get abandoned then leave without seeing anyone? I pretended I had abdominal pain. And once they registered me in, put my wristband on, and told me to wait in the waiting room, I just left. Did they still charge you for the visit? Asking for a friend. In high school I didn't have a car so I walked home. I used to just fast walk to try to beat the crowd of people. But I just didn't want to deal with it anymore so I would stay in the computer lab sometimes and ask my dad to pick me up a few hours later. So once the bell rang to go home. I would just stay in class since I had computers last. The teacher would forget I was in there not even notice me and then turn the lights off. Lock the door. Then leave. Honestly I didn't mind at all. I got to play video games by myself and one time about an hour and a half later the janitor came in and I guess I scared him. He turned the lights on and literally screamed when he saw me. Comma. Night janitor is probably also an antisocial person. Loves his quiet nights. No kids. Just him. The quiet. And the mop. He is a rare breed. The night janitor. A creature of routine. One who does not shy away from the manual labor that needs to be done. In conversation. He sometimes begrudges the mountain he must climb every day. The endless pile of tasks and errands. Which must be completed before he is liberated. But when he steps into the cool darkness. His uniform proudly marking him out from the crowd. Mop in one hand. Bucket in the other. When he takes that first deep breath. Taking in the heady mixture of cleansing disinfectant and the old. Worn wood of the mop handle. A switch flips somewhere in his mind. He is ready for his solitary task. As the layers of the day's grime are cleansed. So too is his mind. Ultimately allowing him a few bold steps towards the inner peace craved by all mankind. Perhaps he listens to music while he works, or replays memories of the days and years gone by. However he passes the time. By the time he is finished with his work he has achieved something profound. Through the repetition which characterizes much of the day's labor and frees his mind for other pursuits. Is it not through this work that Zen monks pursue enlightenment? As he leaves the building, he must make sure to put on his mask of normality. He will be paid. He will spend his wages. And no doubt he will complain about having to be back for work the next day. But the still darkness, his small paradise of repose, will be waiting for him as patiently as yesterday. And when he returns, he will remember that the peace he experiences each day is a sacred secret. Handed down from night janitor to night janitor. A privilege craved by so many in this hectic world of endless work. Going to cross the street. 
but then stopping and pretending I don't have to if there's a car approaching so I don't inconvenience them. I do this, but it's because I don't trust people to actually pay attention and stop to avoid running me over, so I always try to leave enough space that they don't need to slow down. I have phone anxiety. I was going to drive 1.5 hours to my college to talk to them in person over the summer instead of just calling to follow up on something. I'm not really introverted or shy, but I hired phone calls, I never know what to say, and I always end up talking over people when they pick up. I also dread leaving voicemails, they always sound stupid. I routinely cross streets or turn down streets that are in the wrong direction of where I'm going to avoid awkward interactions with vehicles as a pedestrian. Please don't stop and give me that it's okay to go. Wave when there's still traffic barreling down the opposite side of the street and you're the only vehicle trying to be courteous. I appreciate what you're trying to do but it would be easier for everyone if you just kept driving. If my intention is to cross the street and a car is coming by, I keep walking until it passes on the off chance that it tries to stop for me. Killed my already dead grandma a couple to times to get out of social events. That's pretty extreme. Hey man you gonna make it to the party? So hey, I can't. I have plans to murder grandma instead. That's exactly how it goes down. Ha ha ha. Sorry I can't go. My grandma died. You said that 3 months ago. Well yeah, she's still dead. When I was in the military I volunteered for a deployment to get out of going to a wedding. MREs and random rockets mortars. Wedding receptions. Back when I had roommates I didn't know very well. I'd spend all day in my room without meals to avoid awkward pleasantries. Then I'd get really hungry but the prospect of explaining why I'd spent all day in my room kept me inside. Then they'd text me and ask if I was okay. And I'd say yep. Just keeping busy with some projects. And they'd ask if I'd eaten anything since they hadn't seen me. And I'd say yep. Trust me. I'd never go without food. Then I'd wake up at midnight and steal my own food from the fridge. Ducking like and subscribe.